All right, welcome back to Diesel Talk with Tony Salas, 2014 Dodge Ram Ram Truck. Take a look. We're at five miles per hour. So in this case, let me focus in on this. Uh, we have, yes, the truck is derated. It's no bueno. We got a whole bunch of lights on, you know. So in this case, we got our, uh, let's see. What do we got? We got a check engine light. So therefore, we have a check engine light there. And do we have anything else? Well, dev system error, that's for sure. And uh, that's about what we got going on here. So we do have dev fluid. So in this case, definitely have a problem. So let's go ahead and uh, get the old Scantulo out. All right. We're gonna go ahead and take it out of focus. There you go. Okay, what we got here is uh, codes. Let's go ahead and take the codes, take a look at the codes. First of all, let's do a complete code. One thing I teach is to always do a complete code scan. So in this case, we're gonna take a look at everything that's going on. And you'll notice knock sensor, which relates to the death system SER. We got ECM power, that's a very common code. And plausible data received from knock sensor module, which relates to the knock sensor. Knock succeeded. So do we see a common thing here? Knox, the activation of EGR. And then we got our reductant pump. That's probably our main guy right there. Reductant pump A control circuit and SER error detected. So we definitely have issues with the SER system. So one of the quick things I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I'm going to go to engine and we're going to go to data. Take a look at our data. Okay. And we're going to look obviously at exhaust system and we're going to just look real quickly. The engine is running right now and we're going to look at what our pump pressure. Usually when I see 13 pounds of pressure, the thing should have what? 72 PSI of reductant or def fluid pressure. So let's pull that up. Sorry about the reflection off the lens here, but uh, that fluid tank temperature, there we go. Fluid line pressure right there, this guy right there. So fluid line pressure, there you go, 13.6 PSI. So I definitely don't have any depth pressure. Usually the default is 13.6, so we definitely don't have any pressure. So we've learned that through time. On other vehicles, we will see zero PSI if there's no pump activation. So in this case, we definitely have no depth pressure, which is causing our various issues. And so obviously we gotta fix this. So for those of you that don't know, the depth fluid needs to be injected into the exhaust stream, but in order to do that, it needs to have pressure above 72 PSI, 72 PSI. So in this case, uh, we're only seeing 13.6. So let's keep going. Now I have mentioned that uh, one of the things you want to need to understand is a diagnostic trouble code is a test. So even though there's a fault, there's a failure, you know, we need to uh, verify that. So just, uh, I know that I got no pressure, but just to show you here, let's clear the code here. So a lot of guys like to clear codes. I'm not a big fan of it, but the good thing is the Zeus scan tool allows it to be saved. So it's saved on file. So in this case, I'm going to get it continue. And now we're going to go ahead and check for codes after clearing. Let's see what comes back. So there you go. So this kind of proves what I've been teaching in this case. And it's, you know, this is information that the, uh, the code is a test. So it continues to test. So what has failed again? Reductant pump. There it is at P208A, right? So the pump definitely failed and SCR error detected. So in this case, we are in a issue here. We are going to issue. But uh, definitely what's the problem here? Reductant pump A control circuit. So we're gonna look up that P2088A just for example purposes and we'll go from there. I'm pretty much expecting, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm pretty much expecting that the pump assembly needs to be replaced, but it is a circuit open. So I need to make sure that there is no open in the circuits before I say, hey, we're gonna replace this high dollar reductant pump because they're not cheap. All right, let's go look up that P2088A though. Okay, we're pulling up this p 2 08A. Again, reductant pump control circuit open. We saw that the pump is not working. So what's nice about the service information is that they do give me a wiring diagram. Uh, there is a dosing control module and it's right above the tank actually. And in this case, that's what's controlling the pump. So if I follow these wires here in the wiring diagram, this is your assembly. 
your def supply pump assembly right there. So in this case, we see our pressure sensor inputs. We see our def level signal, def level, def level. Then you got your supply pump. So we got def supply pump, def supply. So there's three phase pump. I should see if the scan data will give me any information on that. But in this case, you'll notice we got definitely three wires down here. But understand that power is coming from the you know, the dosing control unit, they are better known as the DSU, uh, DCU, excuse me, uh, dosing control unit. And in this case, we see a ground going to the pump, so the pump needs to be grounded. So we need to check that too. But if I follow the steps, uh, what's nice about service information is that they give me a uh, pretty much an example here, not examples here, an explanation of theory of operation. It says there the depth supply pump has many functions. Its primary purpose is to build adequate system pressure for dosing into the exhaust, meaning to inject that fluid. Uh, we saw it needs to be, it's only at 13 PSI. So when the system is shut down, the pump is used to purge <clears throat> the fluid out of the line and back into the tank. The depth dosing control unit provides 12 volt supply and ground for the pump. It also provides a pulse width modulated signal to the depth supply pump assembly to control the speed and output of the pump. So therefore, again, this DEF dosing control unit will illuminate the mill light via the power chain control module if it has failed. So we definitely have this code set and we got this problem. So uh, possible causes, uh, supply circuits. There you got, you see, we saw three phases in the wiring diagram. We got an open in one of these or we can have a supply pump assembly problem or the D dosing control unit's bad. So, so who's bad? The question is um, either we got one of three problems. We have, we look at the diagram here, either we got a bad DCU, right? Or we got a uh, dev supply pump issue or we have a ground problem. But we can also have maybe four, we may have an open in one of these wires. So I'm sure it's gonna tell me to check this yellow and gray, gray and white and black wire. Let's see what the first step is telling me what to do. Verify that's an active code. And we have done that. We cleared the code. The code came right back. The test failed. That's what a code is. So let's move on to step two. It says check the def supply pump motor A, supply circuit for an open and short. So in this case, we're going to check that. They want you to measure the resistance of the wires between the connector and the pump assembly. So we're going to have to get underneath the truck. It's going to be fun. But uh, what do I mean by that is they're trying to check opens in these wires right here. Again, the gray and white, the yellow and gray and black. So again, this is your connector going to the, the DEF uh, pump assembly on the DEF tank. And in this case, this is our dosing control unit. So therefore, we're going to check from point A to point B, these three wires to see if it's an open because we need to make sure we got power coming to them. So definitely got to check that. And uh, then oh, what are we going to do? Uh, let's go to step uh, three, uh, check supply B. That's one of the three wires. I'm sure there's a C. There you go. Check those three wires. And then if that uh, doesn't yield anything, then we either got a bad pump or we got a bad DCU. So it's one of the two most likely, like I said, it could be an open, but there can also be a ground. Now the vehicle has over 200,000 miles. So we really got to open our eyes and make sure that the wiring hasn't been messed with. Heck, I haven't looked underneath yet. I, I should have done a visual test in my diagnostics um, because. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's anything down there because I've had that happen where I look underneath it and the deaf system's all gone. But anyways, that's something we're gonna look. So let's keep going. All right, we're gonna take off the cover. This is the cover for the tank on the on this after treatment. So. By the way, these snap-on guns, they're great. Mega torque on them, so they're pretty nice, these guns. That's why I got my life mortgage with snap on there. <laughs> and we'll take the other one off. This bracket support. Ta-da! Alrighty, so we got our bottom of our death pump right there so there's the connector we're going to get to so uh let's take it off and uh, check all the connections a lot of wires a lot of dirt so let's keep going
<laughs> it's on there. Slide the ring. See, that other one isn't on. One's on. Putting that fluid in. All right, we're uh, getting this. All right, we're getting this puppy back together. He's putting that fluid in it, like you just saw. Uh, we're making sure we're at least 50%. We're going to do the reductant doser prime perform the deaf reductant doser prime or reductant. I think I can memorize this right. <laughs> Def reductant doser override. So let's see. I got a def doser prime override or def doser pump override. Ooh, I didn't read that correctly. So let's bring her back over here. We got. Let's see. Reductant doser prime override test. Reductant doser pump. Oh, there it goes. The second one in the middle. So we're going to run that one. There we go. Sorry, so crude. Okay, we successfully ran the pump do doser module, make sure we purge the system out. We're still in five mile per hour lockout, which is understandable because we have to let the system test itself to see if there's reduction ox. So I just started up the motor. And what I'm going to do is, we're gonna get her warmed up so we can run the, uh, here you can see the coolant temp right there. Um, in this case, 97.91. But anyways, we're gonna run the uh, the engine until it warms up above 160, 180, somewhere around there. And then we're gonna run the catalyst efficiency test. Okay, here's another example that I teach to my technicians. I'm warming up right now, I'm giving it some RPM. But, uh, again, we're trying to get this thing to acknowledge there's a reduction in NOx now that we repaired the pump, or replaced the pump. But you'll notice, again, we do not have a check engine light. Okay, there's no check engine light. So we do have the activation of EGR codes and SER knocks, but we need to get tested. So, so we're warming up, still warming up. So we're at 152, trying to get to 180. Okay, we're running a catalyst efficiency test and we're gonna let her do a sting, but I'm noticing something already that um, it's gonna confirm that we have NOx reduction, but um, you'll notice that we no longer are E-rated. No check engine light. The ABS traction control is the right front speed sensor issue. So, and the tire pressure, I don't know. We need to check that out. But as you can see, we got no speed reduction. Pretty cool. So that's where we're at here. But uh, we're still going to validate it by running the calus efficiency test. So that's what the scan tool is doing right now. Okay, repair done. Test came from a test drive. The only thing it really needs is the right wheel speed sensor, right front, excuse me, right front wheel speed sensor, and we're good to go. So, another job done. Thanks for watching Diesel Talk. Uh, if you got any comments, leave any comments. Thank you.